Welcome to Gracam Virtual Conference. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. Please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video podcast with your friends, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you do this because we want others to know that we're here. Help make this video go viral by posting it to your Facebook page, your Instagram page, and your Twitter page. This video podcast is available in three forms, audio, video, and as a written text, in order for us to reach our audience. I have 11,000 views on my YouTube page, yet only 310 subscribers. Please subscribe. It's free, and this will help get the ball rolling. In order, for, in order to follow along with my presentation, I strongly recommend everyone on my Facebook friends list to please exchange emails with me so that I can email you everything I do online. Also, I would like for my listeners to follow me on my Medium page. This is where I post my actual speech. I provide all of my sources under Show and Prove. I recommend that you watch the video clips to fully understand what's happening in America. I use this platform to interact with everyone on my friends list and everyone in my social groups by giving black business owners free airtime to promote their products and services. I give people in the faith community an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and ordinary law-abiding citizens an opportunity to share their special talents and skills to my listeners from around the globe. After the show, I offer my guest speakers an incentive by teaching them how to create their own podcast and YouTube channel to help them earn extra revenue during COVID-19. I also assist people on my friends list with creating basic websites, finding college scholarships and grants, housing and legal services all for free. I want to create things like films and black businesses in the black community. I don't want to be online begging. I want to exchange something of value. My thing is if I am going to ask for something, then I'm going to have a product or service behind it. I want everyone on my friends list and everyone in my social groups to please donate to our film project because out of 1,600 people on my friends list, only three people have donated to our film project since March of this year. This is not cool and that's not fair. The reason why we are hosting these monthly virtual conferences is to Encourage our listeners from around the globe to support our film project. The proceeds from the film will put me in a better position financially to hire qualified black middle class professionals, buy office equipment, and purchase property for our Christian business, Grakai of Chicago, which is the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. Eventually, we will launch our African and Caribbean tours so that we can reconnect the diaspora with continental Africans from my African group, Gurkai of Africa. We aim to set up chapters in 10 African nations so that we can host international trade among our people. This will be a win-win for our people who are trapped in American ghettos because we can sell our films, artwork, and music to our brothers and sisters on the continent. In contrast, I will bring the best of the diaspora with me during our African trips to meet African entrepreneurs who will sell their products like beauty supply, artwork, food, etc. This will also help improve the African economy because black Americans as a collective have a $1 trillion spending power. I'm using GoFundMe as a crowdfunding source so that everyone knows exactly where the funds are going towards. Once we reach 200000 then we will work on doing the movie trailer. Our goal is to raise 500000 in order to make a quality black empowerment film based on my revised book, quote, The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America, Second Edition. The title of the film is 
Hood Liberator made in Chicago, The War Against Willie Lynch begins. The sequel, African Liberator, Battle Against the Colonized Mindset. We will be made it, it will be made in South Africa. Without support from the black grassroots and the global African family, I am unable to make my film and do my job. The ball is in their hands. Instructions on how to participate on the show. First, watch my video podcast. This is called Side A. After I finish my presentation, then I will open up the phone lines through Facebook Messenger. This is called Side B. You can interact with me in real time, either by voice call, by clicking on the phone icon, or by video call, by clicking on the camera icon. After, after I finish my pep talk, then we will call on our contributors who will give their perspective about the topic from a spiritual perspective. Then we will open up the discussion for Q&A to our listeners worldwide. On this platform, we, we want to encourage our listeners to please support our film project in four ways. One, one, give a donation of $5 or more to our GoFundMe page. Two, purchase items from our virtual store. Three, purchase my revised book on my Amazon page, either the ebook for $9.99 or the softcover book for $15 plus shipping and handling. Four, through our PayPal page, the Kyle Chicago, the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago, is a faith-based community advocacy organization. Our mission is to eradicate urban violence in Chicago through art, culture, commerce, spiritual development, and hosting African tours. Donations can be used as a tax write-off for U.S. citizens citizens because this is a legitimate 501c3 nonprofit organization. You can find all of our links on my YouTube page under About or on my Medium page under Show and Prove. Today's theme, Unifying the African American Community and the Black Immigrant Community in America, starting in Chicago. First, I would like to encourage all of my African friends on my Facebook page too. Please join my African group called Grakai of Africa. What we're doing over here is to build a bridge between black Americans and black immigrants from Africa, the Caribbean, and Brazil, as well as form an alliance with Africans on the continent. I need my global African family who live in the following African nations, South Africa, Liberia, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Nigeria, Angola, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Uganda. Those of you who have family members or friends from your country living abroad in such places as Canada, Europe, or the United States of America, please tell them about me and my vision for Africa. This will help get the ball rolling. We will set up chapters in 10 African nations that, that we will visit. My African, my vision for Africa to, is to offer private employment to our members based on our budget and sponsorship. We will provide infrastructure for clean running water, after cultural technology to feed the people, offer solar energy to help our members with their electrical generators, and most of all, help improve the African economy in each country we, we will visit. This is not a one person's responsibility. This is a shared responsibility. Grakam is a 21st century Christian movement. I do not want to die in America. I want to be able to take my talents and skills to the continent and work with Africans who want more out of life. Once Grakam of Chicago is up and running, we will declare war on this Willie Lynch mentality within black society. I don't want to be doing this another 30 years. My film project is my last attempt to try to do something positive for my racial group in America. Since black America has rejected my plan and vision for the past 30 years, my Christian business will be membership based. Those who 
are not part of us, we will pray for them, show them tough love, and keep it moving. Our goal is to build Rakayo Chicago, the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago, first before we expand to the African continent for credibility. So when I come to Africa, I don't have to waste time explaining who I am. My Christian business will speak for itself. I created Grakam, the Grassroots Community Activist Movement, in 1991 on a site called Gopher in order to help raise awareness about the genocide which is taking place within our inner cities in America. I wanted to connect with other like-minded black people, African people and others, who share my vision to form a legitimate coalition across the United States. After 15 years of being rejected and overlooked by established black organizations, and yes, even the black church, I decided to write and publish my story about my experience doing street ministry and doing what I could to help improve my community. I published my revised book in 2012 and I created a virtual store in order to generate capital to launch my nonprofit. But I only got little to no support. Now I plan on turning my story into a docudrama in order to reach the black masses. The Grassroots Community Activist Movement is a 21st century solution-based kingdom-building approach to solving social problems on two fronts. A domestic front meaning focus, focusing on solving issues within the black community and on an international front solving issues on the African continent. Grakam promotes B, black economic empowerment through community advocacy and innovation. I am called by my Lord and Savior, Jesus slash Yahshua, to reveal our inner cities in America, similar to that of Nehemiah, who was called by God to re rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah used qualified engineers, architects, and innovators to rebuild a new city. Likewise, I want qualified black middle class professionals on my team who will help make my Christian business effective and successful for years to come. We will have two, two business. One of our business will consist of a nonprofit sector and the other business will consist of a for-profit service-based business. We will expand into the hotel industry, traveling industry, and food industry. I want to be, I want this to become the heart of the black community in order to promote international trade among our people and others. This alone will help improve the black ghettos if given a chance. Our focus is on strengthening the black family while improving the black community, starting in Chicago. We want to teach our members and students about becoming producers, business owners, and investors. I am seeking individuals within the United States who have read my story and who have the expertise in the following areas. Investors, black entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, realtors, attorneys, information technologists, screenwriters, graphic designers, marketers, accountants, and philanthropists. I am also looking for legitimate artists such as film directors, producers, actors, stage managers, grant writers, technical directors. Non-black sympathizers are welcome to join us. However, it's black people's responsibility to build it and to own it. We will use an Afrocentric perspective. My revised book is the foundation of my Christian business. My book is just the beginning. What I want to be remembered for is trying to do something, trying to build something positive in the black community instead of complaining about the white man, career politicians, and the government. Once I have my management team in place or generate enough capital from this film project, then I will start the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. Rakayo Chicago will be a multi-purpose facility. We will provide quality programs and services to benefit black families and the black community while promoting cultural retention. Rakayo Chicago will operate under seven separate functions under one roof. A social service component, a spiritual component, which is going to be optional for secular people, a political component, an entrepreneur component, an entertainment component, a black media component, New Black Voices of Media, and a health and wellness component. This 
It's my hope that the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago will become a hub for emerging Chicago black artists and black entrepreneurs. In time, we will offer a second chance program for ex-offenders of nonviolent crimes, former gang members, and homeless individuals within the community. The of Chicago will separate ourselves from off-code Negroes, no hardened criminals, no active gang members, no urban terrorists, no pedophiles, no, no con artists allowed in this business. In order to weed out degenerates, we will host mandatory orientations. Local community residents and others will be required to attend, pass our criminal background check, sign the community pledge, and submit their thumbprints within our database. We will offer rewards and consequences. If anyone tries to change our objective, which is to which which is to solve black issues, that person or persons will get two warnings. The third time, that person or persons will be placed on our Judas list along with their photo, name, and address. They will be barred for life. Same thing for anyone who tries to rip us off. We are raising the standards in black America and and any other place we set up chapters. What makes Gurkayo Chicago different from other black organizations? Gurkayo Chicago is based on my experience. My pledge to my, our black youth, we will, you will never have to endure such foolish, foolishness that I had to go through just for trying to do something positive in the black community. Also, the grassroots community activist movement is a 21st century faith-based community advocacy focusing on solving social problems within the African-American community. Rukam is a Christian socialist organization. For me, Christian socialist socialism is an authentic form of Christianity. A Christian socialist is a form of socialism based on the teachings of Jesus. Many Christian socialists believe that capitalism is idolatrous and rooted in greed, social inequality, and institutionalized racism, which most Christian denominations consider a moral sin. We will focus on what we stand for, love, compassion, social justice, and liberation theology. Jesus told us to focus on the least of these in society, according to Matthew chapter 25, verse 35 through 40. He also commanded us to be a witness to others, not just for us to read his word, but to activate social change in the world, according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20. We will be committed to the healing ministry of Jesus by showing compassion to inner city youth and their families, which will promote dignity to the people and community we will serve. We will promote an authentic form of Christianity, which is for me Christian socialism. We will focus, we will emphasize the importance of morals and character development for both Christians and non-Christians. We will also focus on strengthening the black, the black family and focusing on solving black issues by promoting black economic empowerment. Unlike Pan-Africanism. What is Pan-Africanism? Pan-Africanism is a worldwide movement that aims to encourage and strengthen bonds of solidarity between all indigenous and the diaspora people of African descent based on a common goal dating back to the Atlantic slave trade. The movement extends beyond continental Africans with a substantial support base among the African diaspora in the Americas and Europe. Pan-Africanism have its origins in the struggle of the African people against enslavement and colonization. And this struggle may be traced back to the first resistance on slave, slave ships through the constant plantation and colonial uprisings and the Back to Africa movements of the 19th, 19th century based on the belief that unity is vital to economic, social, and political progress and aims to unify and uplift people of African ancestry. At, at its core, Pan-Africanism is a belief that African people, both on the continent and in the diaspora, share not merely a common history, but a common destiny. Pan-Africanism 
intellectual, cultural, and political movements tend to view all Africans and descendants of Africans as belonging to the same race and sharing cultural unity. Pan-Africanism um, holds a sense of a shared historical fate of Africans in America, West Indies, and on the continent itself, centered on the Atlantic slave, Atlantic uh, trade in slaves, African slavery, and European imperialism. Why the Kai of Chicago is needed in the African American community? We will focus on our black youth and teach them about manhood and how to handle themselves before lashing out. Only black men can teach black boys how to become black men. We have a lot of problems in the African American community. We have so much hate within our own culture than any other group. This self-hate is real. The worst thing that happened to us during the slave trade was that the slave owners beat who we were out of our ancestors. For example, the situation about the young black rapper PNB Rock. He was eating at a public restaurant in a high crime area in Los Angeles. From my understanding, his girlfriend was taking pictures and post posting them on social media. All of a sudden, some urban terrorists pulled up and in broad daylight robbed him and shot him to death. Family, be posting your location. This was very unfortunate. These urban terrorists are taking out our black youth. They're not doing this for money. If that was the case, then they would be robbing white people too. This is about getting clout and full of envy. Now, Roscoe Chicken and Waffle may, may get hit with a nuisance injunction because someone was killed in their establishment. It's the same mentality that killed Nipsey Hussle. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing gangster about sneaking up on a brother in public while he is eating with his girlfriend. Shooting an upcoming rapper who is a high profile is dumb because you're going to get caught and you're going to go to prison for a long time. We have too many jealous dudes out here who hate to see another black man who is successful in getting things popping. There's a lot of ways to make money out here. All you gotta do is be on code with black people. Communicate what you can bring to the table. Connect with legitimate business people. When you come to the inner cities, don't flash your jewelry. Some of these Platforms like that promotes street beefs by instigating situations only to increase his ratings while causing unnecessary casualties. As we see circumstances that's happening in major cities across the United States of America, America has become a graveyard for young black rappers. For example, Biggie Small, Tupac, and Pop Smoke, and many others. Rappers have been shot and robbed. This is a serious issue that must be addressed. When a white person is successful or shining in that coon's mind, urban terrorists give, give them a pass because to them a white man is supposed to shine. But if a black person is shining or is successful, then it becomes a problem. This ain't just about the streets being hungry. We have to understand this is part of that Willie Lynch mentality. They are struggling financially and they're upset watching another black man on on the come up. In any major city in America, you will find a skip row full of elderly black men. You know why? Because many of them have adult children who, who they failed to nurture and now they're old and can't get money like they used to and their, their adult children have abandoned them. This is karma in real time. Black fathers, you need to nurture your seeds now because your seeds may have to take care of you one day. The black baby boomers beg for integration and forfeit their black wealth for it. Now we got gentrification hitting the African American community left and right while black on black crime is on the rise. Yet none of these 
black leaders want to take responsibility for this L. The amount of time and en energy our grandparents used to push social integration and cultural assimilation, then why can't we use that same en energy to reconnect and build in Africa? We had our own black businesses such as restaurants, hotels, and theaters. Black America went out of their way just to eat at Becky's restaurant. They went out of their way to get rid of our Negro leagues so they could play in white leagues. There's a big economic gap, wealth gap between blacks and whites. This is why we need reparations. Marcel Dixon from South Carolina was pushing reparations during his political campaign, yet he only raised $50,000. I believe that black America is comfortable being treated as third and fourth class citizens because things in America are convenient and easy access. If you don't support your advocates, then you won't have any advocates. In Grecaio, Chicago, we want to offer a safe space where black youth and their families can go. When you live in a hostile environment, which was created by the white supremacist financial elites due to economic Depri deprivation based on race. For example, the white supremacist financial elites use our tax dollars to support these other groups such as Afghan refugees, illegal Latino immigrants, and Ukrainian refugees while leaving us destitute. We're fighting over the crumbs. This is why we have to control our environment. Over here, we welcome black immigrant communities. Once we're able to build Grecaio Chicago, then we can offer benefits to our members, such as offering stipends for our black youth who act in our films and in our stage plays, offer daycare for our members and students, offer financial assistance with rent, utilities, transportation, and financial literacy. We will build a community network with black immigrants in Chicago and beyond, as well as African nations where we have local chapters. I want black people in America and abroad to learn how to value ourselves. We're helping everyone. We helped everybody. Now it's time for us to help ourselves. For the diaspora, that's healing from Willie Lynch. And for continental Africans, that's healing from colonization. Speaking of colonization, after the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, King Charles III is now head of state in 14 nations. There's a lot of overlap between the U.S. extradition treaties as well as the Commonwealth. They didn't spend 500 years building their empire to watch it de degenerate in a century. If it's not that important and only symbolic, then why did they create a website documenting how many nations they there there are in the Commonwealth if it's not important? You don't have legalities for sim symbol symbolism. You have legalities for power and control. If you look closely at the legal documents, none of these African nations are chartered for Africans. For example, the document for Nigerians does not say the word independence on, on it. It says, continue the Queen's don't, domain. None of these African nations are controlled by Africans. Africa is a continent that is held hostage by Europeans. Africa is not a continent based on land, but rather based on settler colonialism. Everybody is telling us what the agenda should be. Other people have a vest interest in guiding what we should think through persuasion and through movies, which is why it's essential for us to connect with other like-minded black people and African people. What descendants of American slaves is 
is setting the tone for everyone. This is what it means to be cultural leaders. As I stated earlier, we have to have a crackdown on these off-code behaviors within the black society. This podcast is exposing what's really going on in black America as it pertains to West Africa and the slave trade. We have to reconciliate as people of America and people of West Africa. Some black Americans recommend that West African nations should pay reparations to descendants of American slaves in the forms of land and citizenship based on DNA testing. Rakai of Chicago wants to bring the best of the diaspora to help improve Africa, starting in South Africa in those shanty towns. We will bring black people who have the skills and qualifications. If the diaspora won't do it, then non African groups will. For example, people like the Arabs, East Indians, and Europeans. These group, other groups are finding value and opportunity by building in Africa. White America constantly remind us that we're not home. Black people are always marching and protesting. Our so-called black leaders are not operating in our best interests. Our people are crying about systematic racism in America. Well, what are you going to do about it? My question to our black youth, why not consider supporting my vision and plan for black America so that you can help us rebuild the black community and expand to Africa so that we can build over there too? When you say, let's look into Africa as a contingency plan, the same people who complain about our treatment over here in America will give you a dumbfounded look. Foreigners in Africa are controlling the tourist industry. You go to China, the Chinese control their their tourism. You go to Europe, the European control their tourism. Tourism alone is a billion dollar industry. If we don't control the narrative and put a positive image about Africa, then Western media will continue to promote the worst of Africa to make the diaspora stay away. I'm calling on all RACAM members worldwide to do your part in helping us get our story on the big screen so that we can make our presence known in the African-American community starting in Chicago. RACAM of Chicago will create and own our own distribution centers and warehouse. In summary, our platform is dedicated to discussing all things eccentric to the black experience. We got our start in forming social groups, then expanded into podcasting. And now our aim is to get our story on the big screen in order to reach the black masses through our first film. We will offer a 21st century solution to solve our social problems domestically and internationally. We want to make our presence known in the African American community starting in Chicago. Our goal is to educate the minds of our members and students in understanding economics, politics, and social issues which affects our people. We will emphasize a strong focus on family values and promote B, Black Economic Empowerment. Thank you all for uh, listening to this um, video podcast. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to open up the um, phone lines for my um, panel. And I'm going to give each person, you know, I would say between 10 to 15 minutes to, you know, um, give their perspective from a spiritual perspective, you know, my uh, presentation. And then once we're done with that, we're going to open up the phone lines you know, for everybody that's on my uh, friends list and also by this being on Facebook Live, you know, you all can participate. But again, um, I prefer that you could, that you would connect with me through Facebook Messenger. Again, I use Facebook uh, Live as uh, to do a little pep talk to, you know, motivate people to uh, participate. But I prefer that we go through Facebook Messenger so that way you can just call in and talk with me directly 
And, you know, we just have to keep doing this until we're able to raise the funds. Uh, again, uh, thank you all for listening. And um, I'm fin to go ahead and open up these phone lines.